The date was February 22nd, 2020. The sun rose over Washington, D.C. just like any other day, and the citizens of USA's capital stirred, probably wondering what was going to happen in the White House over the next 24 hours. As it turns out, they really should have been looking at the anthem, because there, something special was brewing. The Washington Justice were hosting their first ever homestand for Week 3, Season 3 of the Overwatch League. Some fans who were attending may have been looking forward to the heavyweight fight between the NYXL and the Philadelphia Fusion. Others were excited to watch their home team play at home for the first time against the Paris Eternal. But no, those two games were nothing compared to what ended up being the main event. Some of you may be expecting me to say Tank Bowl, but no, that's not right. Because unlike the NFL or the NBA, there's no draft where the worst teams get the first picks. There's no point to tank. No, both of these teams are going to be giving this game 100% of their effort. It's just... Well, take the Boston Uprising, for example. This is a team that showed nothing short of managerial ineptitude last season, consistently trading away their most talented players while repeatedly being cited as a toxic environment. And just like after Season 1, Boston had destroyed everything and was coming into Season 3 with basically a full roster of unproven rookies. Boston has been able to find diamonds in the rough before, but could they repeat that magic? Most didn't think so, placing them dead last in the preseason power rankings. Then you have the Houston Outlaws, one of the most curious anomalies in Overwatch, because it doesn't matter what players they have, what meta it is, it doesn't even matter how much money they have to flex, Houston will somehow find a way to lose. Over the offseason, the Outlaws signed big name free agents like Mecco, Jexay, and Repel to help shore up their biggest weaknesses. On paper, this team should be at least mediocre. But whether it was due to the players, the coaches, the travel, or the sickness that was ravaging the team, they had looked pathetic up to this point. A complete breakdown in team synergy, not comfortable at all in the meta, swapping their two flex supports in and out with no rhyme or reason, just an all-around mess. This game had been hyped up for weeks as the antithesis to the Clash of the Titans, and today, they would finally meet. What happened? was a level of suck that not even a black hole could match. The game started on Ilios, and immediately the Outlaws did what they did best, serving up the game on a silver platter. Blase put on his best Stormtrooper cosplay and missed every single shot. Muma left his team wide open for Axiom's Shatters. The team's ultimate management was atrocious, even losing fights when they had all six to work with. On the other side, Moonbong's anti-nades were devastating, and the almighty Jerry was already making a name for himself in his debut. Boston wins the first map. Houston fans are already in shambles. Map 2. Repel comes in for Rockus, and the Outlaws show a little more life, especially when they got Blase off of McCree. Thanks to some incredible play on Doomfist and Genji, and even Torvjorn, Boston's one-minute overtime push was completely shut down, opening the door for the Outlaws. All they had to do was win one fight in 2 minutes and 40 seconds. A simple task to any other team. They're so close to that single tick! And here we go! Blade comes out, and he only connects on the swimmer, but he shuts him down! Map 2 ended in a draw, because of course it did. The next map, Rockus came back in for Repel on the side of the Outlaws, but the team was just sending him in to be slaughtered. Boston showed, actually, some really good team play and coordination this map. They finished Dorado with over 3 minutes in the bank, taking advantage of the many openings that Houston left for them. Then when the side switched, Houston couldn't get anything going. Jerry's mere presence on Widowmaker was enough to throw the entire team off. Boombrong enabled Axiom to pop off, Colorhex feasted on May, and the Outlaws couldn't even capture point B. Boston went up 2-0, and they needed just one more map to claim victory and end the Outlaws' suffering. Mufin flexed to the one Uprising fan in attendance, having no idea that the game wasn't even half over. Map 4. Once again, the flex supports get swapped, and once again, with her Palin, the team seemed to have a little more control. Dante started to wake up on May. Jexay's Lucio started to put in work. But on the other side, Axion was still destroying Muma in the Rhine 1v1, and Color Hex was playing as solid as ever. But was there perhaps some rookie fatigue setting in on the side of Boston? To the back like Jerry! 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 He tried to make the moves! Jerry! Oh my <laughs> word! 
This map was an all-out slugfest between kindergartners. Both teams finished the map, both teams had about a minute in the time bank, and both teams failed to capture point A in their time bank rounds. That's right, for the first time in Overwatch League history, there were two draws in one match. Because of course there were. We were going into map 5 with a score still at 2-0. And guess what? Houston swaps their flex support again for Oasis. But as Rockus plugs in his keyboard for the third time this game, you could sense that the momentum was beginning to shift. Failing to end the game on Blizzard World took the wind out of Boston's sails, the fatigue and inexperience that comes with having a team of rookies started to show. Jerry was still doing his job, that man is unshakable, but players like Mufin and Swimmer were practically non-existent, allowing Jexay to step in. Let's put this into perspective, there's a term in Overwatch called the Fleta Deadlift, which is when one player's final blows in a map is 50% of the entire team's kills. And on Oasis, Jexay got three quarters of the way to a Fleta Deadlift. On Lucio, he played aggro, he took the 1v1s, and he won them. Thanks to Houston stepping up just as much as Boston was stepping down, the Outlaws won their first map of 2020. So we moved on to Nepal, and something miraculous happened. Houston didn't switch their flex supports. This is it. Houston has found the source of their power. Despite Jerry's best efforts, and he really did try to carry this one. Trading one for one. Blase! Take it out! He's trying to go for the dead end of his Jerry! He can't be stopped! He's a machine! An absolute monster on the high ground! The momentum had completely shifted. Boston was boomed. They had lost the Battle of Endurance, just walking in to get rolled over. All Houston had to do was shut down Jerry and play like something that even slightly resembles a good team, and they would eventually come out on top. Houston won Nepal and sent this game to a decisive map 7. No matter what, someone had to win on Li Zhang. And then, disaster. Houston subbed their flex support for the fifth time this game. Just as we thought that they may have learned their lesson, now Rappel was back in, and Houston completely collapsed. Any coordination that they had in the last two maps was gone, and sensing blood in the water, Boston came alive once again. Myungbong builds up Nano first, who powers up Axiom, whose shatter knocks them to the ground for Swimmer to push into the void. In the 11th hour, Boston narrowly managed to avoid getting reverse swept in the most humiliating way possible, and after a 7-map marathon, Boston technically took the win. This game was unlike anything I've ever seen in Overwatch. Again, this wasn't a tank bowl. I can tell you for certain that both the Outlaws and the Uprising were trying their very hardest to win throughout all seven maps. It's just that they kept getting into their own way. Whether it was Muma leaving wide windows of shield downtime for Axiom to shatter him, or Blasé dragon blading into a Brigida while on 50 health, or Jerry just walking off the map. Boston won this game because in the end, they didn't shoot themselves in the foot quite as badly as Houston did. So are the Houston Outlaws and the Boston Uprising the two worst teams in the league? It's too early to tell. But did they simultaneously provide the best and worst game of the season so far? Absolutely. Thanks for watching guys, don't get tilted. Damage control of the high ground too much, I sleep. Open Earth Shatter here for Mooba, instead he's gonna offer the charge. Mooba, where you're taking him? Off into No Man's Land, and he's pinned backwards. What on what earth? What am I witnessed? What am I seeing? Why? Truly living up to this battle of the ages between Boston Uprising and the Houston Outlaws.